radical expressions and rational exponents. So you all know how to square a number. The reverse operation of squaring a number is finding the square root of a number. For example, the square root of 25 or 5 and negative 5. Because 5 squared equals 25 and negative 5 squared equals 25. So in general, we can say that b squared equals a. Then b is a square root of a. So what happens when we have a radical expression? the end root of a. This symbol is your radical. Inside your radical, you have your radicand. And the end is your index. n is an integer, and n has to be greater than or equal to 2. So by definition of the principle and root of all real numbers, the n root of a equals b. This means that b to the n equals a. So even your index is even, then both A and B are positive. Even is odd, then A and B can be any real numbers. Let's do an example. The fourth root of 16. Since our index is 4 and it's even, then our answer will be positive. Because 2 to the fourth equals 16. Let's do another example. What if we have the fifth root of negative 32? Since our index, or our n, is odd, then our answer can be either positive or negative. Our answer will be negative 2, because negative 2 to the fifth equals negative 32. Now let's try an example with variables. What do we have the cube root of 8x to the 6? Well, we can rewrite this as the cube root of 2 cubed times x cubed times x cubed. By the product property, we can rewrite this as the cube root of 2 cubed times the cube root of x cubed times the cube root of x cubed. So we get 2 times x times x, which equals 2x squared. And that's your answer. OK, now what do we have? The square root of x squared over 5. Well, by the quotient property, we can rewrite this as the square root of x squared over the square root of 5. 
Well, we know that the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 5, if you plug it in into your calculator, will give you a decimal. But we don't want a decimal. So what we want to do is we want to rationalize the denominator. So in other words, we want to get rid of the radical. So how do we do that? We can multiply by the square root of 5, both on the denominator and then on the numerator. This will give us x times the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 times 5, which is the same thing as the square root of 5 squared, which is the same thing as x times the square root of 5 over 5. And that's your final answer. Now let's talk about rational exponents. We have a to the 1n. The 1n is your rational exponent. That indicates the nth root of a. If we have a to the m over n, m over n indicates the nth root of a raised to the power of m, which is the same thing is the nth root of a to the m. Let's do an example. What if we have a to the one third? In this case, your n is three. So then it's gonna be the cube root of eight. And the cube root of eight is two. What if we have a to the two thirds? Your n is three and your m is 2. We can write it this way or we can write it like this. The cube root of 8 squared. I'm going to show you that you're going to get the same answer. The cube root of 8 is 2. When we square 2, we get 4. Here, the cube root of 8 squared is the same thing as the cube root of 64 which is the same thing as the cube root of 4 cubed. Our answer is 4. As you can see, you get the same answer. So what if we have 8 to the 1 third times 8 to the 2 thirds? Remember that by the product property, when multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So I can rewrite this as 8 to the 1 third plus two thirds, which gives me eight to the three over three, which is the same thing as one, so our answer is eight. What if we're dividing? What if I have eight to the one third divided by eight to the two thirds? So by the quotient of power property, when dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So this is the same thing as 8 to the 1 third minus 2 thirds, which will give us 8 to the negative 1 third. To make the exponent positive, we want to bring it down. So our answer would be 1 over 8 to the 1 third. We already know that 8 to the 1 third is the same thing as the cube root of 8. And we know that the cube root of 8 is 2. So our answer is 1 half. If we go up here, we can check that our answers are correct. A to the 1 third is 2. A to the 2 thirds is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. For the division, A to the 1 third is 2. A to the 2 thirds is 4. 2 over 4 is 1 half. So what if we want to write radical expressions by, use, by using rational exponents? Well, we can use the same definition. Let's say that we have the square root of 3. Well, we know that 3 is our a. 
so a equals 3. Our index, which is n, equals to 2. And our m is just 1, right? It's just like if we have 1. So then our answer would be 3 to the 1 half. Okay, what if we have the fourth root of 5 squared? Once again, our a equals 5. Our n, which is our index, is 4. And our m is 2. So then our answer would be 5 to the 2 fourths, which equals to 5 to the 1 half. And that's your answer.